I like to say that machine quilting the paisley feather is kind of like a party trick. It's easy to do, but impresses everybody. Hey, I'm Angela Walters from Quilting Is My Therapy. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to quilt the paisley feather, a design that looks way more difficult than it actually is. I'll show you how to quilt it as an all over, as well as how you can make those individual feathers shine. I'm gonna demonstrate how to do it on a sewing machine and a long arm, and of course, share plenty of tips and tricks along the way. So, let's get to it. The paisley feather is gonna start with a nice elongated swirl. Then I'm gonna echo, echo, echo. This is gonna act as the spine of my paisley feather, so adding a couple echoes is really gonna build it up and let it stand out. Once I'm done echoing, I wanna make sure that I'm on the same side as the outside of that swirl because I'm gonna quilt paisleys all along that line. To do that, I'm gonna start by quilting a skinny paisley. I want it to be nice and skinny because I'm gonna start adding echo lines around the outside of it. And don't be afraid to really extend it out there. We want this paisley feather to be big, so making it nice and long means it's gonna fill up a lot of area. But once I have that paisley, it's time to echo, echo, echo. Now there's no touching on this design, so once my foot hits a previously quilted line, it's time to stop and change direction. If I were to keep coming down and make all those lines touch, it would take away from the beautiful all over texture of the design. It doesn't matter how many times I echo it, but I do wanna make sure I end up at the spot where they come away from each other. So here's my spine or my swirl, and here's my paisley. Where they come apart starts to form a V, and that V is where I wanna be to add my next paisley. And I'm gonna quilt my next skinny paisley right out of the center of that area, right there. That's gonna leave me room on both sides to add my echo lines. And don't forget, we wanna make it nice and skinny, and we're gonna build up around it with those echoes. I'm really trying to keep that spacing consistent, so I'm running the foot along the previously quilted line, and I'm trying not to run the lines into each other because I don't want it to take away from my feather. And there's our second paisley. I'm gonna keep working my way around the outside of that swirl, adding those paisleys, remembering that I want them to come out right directly from the middle of that V. Not only is that giving it plenty of room for the echo lines, it's gonna help the paisleys wrap around the swirl and just make it look better. Trust me, we want lots and lots of echo lines on this because it's really gonna build it up. Now I'm gonna keep on going, closing my paisleys around that swirl. If it just so happens that I have room inside my swirl, I'm gonna work my way in there as well and fill it up with paisleys or echo lines. But if I don't have room inside the swirl, if it's all closed off, I'm just gonna stop when I run out of room. And there's my first beautiful paisley feather. It is so fast and so beautiful. It's kind of like the most perfect design ever. So it's time to move on and add another one. So since I'm here, I need to decide first of all, where do I want the next paisley feather to go? And then I'm gonna use echoing to get to that point. So let's pretend I wanna add my next paisley feather over here. I'm gonna echo my way around and get to that point and then quilt my next swirl. Now when I quilt that next swirl, I really wanna extend it out into space because this feather needs room to grow. If you're a little nervous about doing that, using a marking pencil or a marking tool of some kind is a great way to go about it because you can mark out exactly how you want that swirl to go and then you can follow the lines and echo, echo, echo. This ultimate marking pencil is one of my favorites. It's actually a solid form of the chalk and the pounce pad, so it marks on smoothly and comes off easily. But any marking tool will do. I'm not gonna bother marking out the echoes because once I have this main line, all I have to do is echo around it. One thing that I think will make your paisley feathers look beautiful is to have that initial swirl be kind of curvy. I just think the curvier it is, the better it looks. I mean, not that I really have a reason for that, it's just really my own opinion. Now between last week and this week in the Free Motion Challenge Quilting Along, we have done a lot of echoing. So you're gonna have a lot of practice and you're gonna get really good at it. Just remember the trick to keeping that echoing consistent is to look ahead of the needle and move smoothly. A smoother line will look perfect and that's the most important thing. And don't forget I can add as many echo lines as I want, but 
that's pretty good right here. Now I'm gonna start building up my feather by adding those paisleys. And if it helps, marking out that first initial paisley will help you out. I'm gonna quilt along that and then echo, 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 and get to the V where they come apart from each other before I add my next one. Once I get to that V and I'm ready to add my next paisley, I'm gonna quilt it so that it comes directly out the center. I'm gonna keep it nice and skinny and then I'm gonna echo around it. If you're quilting the paisley feather and it's not looking quite right, be sure that your paisleys are nice and long. Sometimes when we're learning a new design, our tendency can be to quilt it shorter and smaller, but this design looks so much more beautiful when you quilt those paisleys nice and long. If you're having trouble making yourself extend out there, you can either mark out that initial paisley, or another thing that would help is to mark a guideline a couple inches away and then quilt your paisley so that it extends out to that line. That's gonna help give you a visual reference to see just how far you need to go. And even though it might look weird at first, you're gonna start adding those echo lines and it's gonna look great. I'm gonna continue quilting my paisleys until I get done with this feather. I have a little bit of room left inside my swirl, so I'm gonna use echoing to fill that in. And then that feather is finished. It looks so big and so beautiful, and it's really starting to fill up the area fast. And I'm gonna quilt my next one so it extends out here. In this particular example, I want it to be more like an all over, so I'm gonna quilt them going in every which direction. So maybe from here, I might add another echo, and then quilt my next swirl so it extends from the previous feather. And again, if it helps, giving yourself a little mark, that'll help you visualize where the next one's gonna go. Once I have that shape, I'm going to echo, echo, echo. Now, as I start quilting more and more of these paisley feathers, I'm gonna start to see gaps in between them. So what I wanna do is fill them in while I'm there. That means I might start quilting a couple paisleys, pause just for a second, fill in any gaps, and then continue on with my feather. And if I want, I can go ahead and fill in this unquilted area with some echoes or even some more paisleys. It doesn't matter what I put in there, just as long as I fill it in. I could echo what I've just quilted. I could echo what I previously quilted. It's like a choose your own echoing adventure. And if I want them all to kind of blend into each other, have a nice texture, I'm gonna fill it in with similar shapes. So echo lines, more paisleys, and I'm definitely gonna keep that spacing consistent. Once that gap's filled in, I'm gonna continue quilting my paisley feather. If you're newer to machine quilting, it might be a little tricky to stop quilting the paisley feather and go into echoing and then come back. If you find that switching it up like that is just a little too confusing, go ahead and quilt your whole feather and then echo back and fill it in. It doesn't matter when you fill in the gap, just as long as you fill it in. Besides making the spine of my feather curvy, I also tend to quilt my paisleys so that they kind of curve over a little bit mostly because that's just how I've always done it. Your paisleys might stick out a little straighter and that's completely fine. Just make sure you echo, fill in around it, and then move on. You have to remember, as you're quilting your paisley feathers, if one of those paisleys look a little weird, you can't stress out about it because eventually you're gonna come put more stuff around it and fill it in. And just look at that pretty, beautiful texture. I'm ready to quilt another elongated swirl with a little bit of curve to it, just because that's how I like it, and then echo some more. Now the reason I like to add my paisleys around the outside of that swirl, or the biggest part of the swirl, is that it lets it take up as much room as possible. If I happen to end up on the other side, I could definitely add paisleys there, or I could even quilt them on both sides. The reason I only quilt it on one side is because, well, it's just easier. Okay, so let's talk about um, some unintentional customizations that you might make with this design. Remember how I said you really wanna make those paisleys nice and long, you really wanna extend them out into space? Well, that's because it makes it look better. In this particular example, I'm quilting my paisleys like I should, and I'm echoing them, but they're so short that they're not really creating a big, beautiful feather. If I find that I'm getting in the habit of doing this, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna come back and echo, build them up, and then continue on trying to make sure I quilt that paisley so it extends out into space. It's amazing what echoing will fix. So echoing around this is gonna build them back up and it's gonna look great.
And if I have any gaps in between those paisley feathers, and, and if I want to take care of them right now, I can just add some more echoing or paisleys and then get back on track. And even though I started out with those small paisleys, adding a couple more echo lines is already starting to build them up. And when I'm done, they're going to blend in beautifully with the rest. If I'm wanting the individual feathers to stand out just a little bit, I can fill in between them with a contrasting design like pebbles. So let's see what that looks like. So I'm quilting my paisley feather and it's looking great, but I have a little gap right here. And if I wanted these to blend in together, I would use more echoing. But if I want the paisley feathers to kind of stand out a little bit more, not blend in so much, I'm going to fill this with so something smaller like pebbles or for bigger areas, just maybe smaller swirls will give you a nice pop of contrast. So throwing in a few so that pebbles, that shows up. once that little gap is filled in, then I can go right back into my paisleys and finish my feather. My goal is to quilt as few pebbles as possible. So I fill in that area and then move on. This is gonna take a little bit longer, of course, since I'm quilting those tiny pebbles. So I'm not gonna do this in a busy fabric where you can't see it. I'm gonna save this technique for areas of the quilt that I really wanna draw attention to or in areas that I wanna show off. Now, let's see what it looks like to quilt the paisley feather on the long arm. There really isn't much difference when quilting this design on a long arm. I'm still gonna make my nice elongated swirl, I'm still gonna echo, and I'm still gonna add my paisley feathers. Really the main difference is that I feel a little bit more comfortable quilting longer swirls on my long arm than my sewing machine. But it doesn't matter because it's not the size of the swirl that determines the density, it's the spacing between the lines. So as long as I'm keeping the spacing consistent, I'm gonna have the same overall density. And I definitely want to fill in any gaps before I move on because as I progress along the quilt, I'm sure to forget any gaps that I've left behind. When you're echoing the paisleys on the long arm, changing direction can pose a little bit of a problem for newer quilters. Learning how to control the ease of movement that a long arm has can be a little tricky. So try slowing down just a bit if you're having trouble with control and looking ahead will really help you with those echo lines. Other than that, it's a fast, amazing design no matter which machine you quilt it on. And just like that, you have a design that looks really, really difficult, but was really, really easy. I promise I won't tell if you won't. Now, if you're quilting along with me on the custom panel designed for this challenge, go ahead and fill in that last area highlighted in red with the paisley feathers. And don't forget, I have a downloadable tip sheet with quilting diagrams so that you can trace over the design until it clicks. Well, throughout these last six videos, we have quilted our beautiful flora and foliage panel. I hope you are so proud of the job you've done because I know I am as well. And I'll be back in a couple months with another free motion challenge quilting along. In the meantime, you can check out some of my older video series to brush up on some of your machine quilting skills. To find all of those previous challenges, visit fmqchallenge.com. Until then, happy quilting.